Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out GarageBand, which is the software built into most Apple computers. And it's an incredibly powerful little tool, this one. You know, if you want to make your own demos, uh, you know, if you're a songwriter, if you want to make your own backing tracks, uh, if you want to record yourself doing improvisations so you can see where you're going right or where you're going wrong, um, you know, it's incredibly easy to use, really easy to get started on. And, uh, you know, I can't recommend it highly enough as an introduction to recording. You know, uh, it, you might probably find you progress beyond GarageBand and you want to get into either Pro Tools or Logic Pro. Um, you know, I, personally, I use Pro Tools most of the time. And uh, when I'm recording with my band, We Came As Strangers, I tend to use Logic Pro because the producer of that band prefers that software. So, uh, but if you, no matter what you might end up getting to, GarageBand is a really, really great introduction. And uh, what I want to do in this lesson is kind of take you through what all of the main components components of the software are, where you'll find the loops, you know, what the transport control does, how you add effects and that kind of stuff. And then in later lessons, we're going to go into all of those areas in a little bit more detail. So uh, to start off with, I've just opened uh, just the default settings, saved it, which is what I'd recommend you do. You don't need to worry about all of that stuff, the key and the tempo and all of those things that asks you right in the beginning, because you can edit that once you've opened the program. And I just made a real simple little kind of four track uh, little groove, kind of semi-bluesy kind of a groove thing here, uh, just as a vehicle for me to show you how the software is working. So uh, if you uh, have a look here, you can see the four tracks. I may as well give you a quick little play of it first of all, so you can hear a uh, first little bit of what's going on. And you'll see that little red line going there across the top of the screen, and that's uh, showing you what part is being played, what part of the song is being played. And uh, I'll point out here that it's the space bar that starts and stops, um, and you can hit return to take you back to the start of the track, okay? Those things are also available at the bottom of the screen in these little five buttons here called transport. You can see the play button, pretty obvious. Start and stop. You can see that the little arrow there with the line next to it is go back to the beginning. Uh, you can also move around by clicking in the top little section there where the bar numbers are and you can move that little red line around and or you can use the fast forward and rewind buttons which jump by the bar. All very, very simple that. So that collection there, you've also got a record button but we're not going into recording uh, just yet. But uh, you know, that, that little collection of stuff there is called the transport. Um, and uh, next thing we've got is this little kind of area here um, which tells you the measures so what beat and what bar you're in. You can also flip between this using these little arrows here. You can see the time, so how long you've been recording for in minutes and seconds. You can see the key, the tempo, and the time signature that you've got there. Uh, or you can see the type of chord that you've got going on later on. Uh, we can discuss that a little later. You can also select that up here in the control section. You can see there show chord in LCD. That's the little screen. That's what they call it, the LCD. So uh, next thing we've got here uh, I want to show you is the cycle button. So when you click the cycle button, you can see this little uh, yellow bar happens at the top here. And that's going to cycle that one little area or whatever area you've selected. So. You can see now if I play that, it'll play through those two bars and jump back to the beginning again. You can move that by clicking in the middle. You can move it wherever you like. If you grab the end, you can extend it or shorten it uh, at the start or the front. It doesn't matter. You can just move it around as you like. Very useful function. Uh, you can hit the C button to turn that cycle on and off. So that's a very, very cool little uh, thing that you've got there. Now the next button along here is a metronome. Now a metronome is going to give you a click and by turning it on and off, which is also Apple U or Command U uh, to turn that on and off there. If you Command U gets that thing on and off. When it's on, it'll give you a click. So if we go to where there's no music and press play, you can hear you've got a little click track there, which is very important if you come to record your own guitar audio and you haven't got any loops in yet, which I generally don't recommend, but uh, we'll talk about that another time. So we'll leave it off for now. Next door to that, we've got the volume control, which is just the overall volume there for your headphones or whatever, or speakers, uh, depending on what you like. So that's uh, the uh, most important kind of bits. One thing, little interesting thing, no matter where you adjust stuff to, if you hold the Alt key down and click on it, it sets it back to Unity. That's a common Mac thing, very useful in uh, pro audio kind of uh, software that you've got that available. So uh, 
Let's have a look at some of these other buttons down the bottom. The first one, the big plus sign. Now that's create a new track and if we click on that you'll see there that we've got three different options for creating a new track. We've got a software instrument, we've got a real instrument, which would be like microphones and stuff, and we've got guitar. So if you want to plug directly into your audio interface and record the guitar, it's got kind of built-in amps and stuff. It's very, very cool. Uh, we're not going to be doing any of that right now, but uh, we'll be covering that in a future lesson, but that's where you do it. Um, next door to the little plus sign, we've got the little uh, scissor tool, which is the edit button. So uh, if we click on that, we can see we've got a few different editors. This particular one, this is uh, the, the piano. I think we've got selected at the moment. And you can see as the piano goes along, you can see little, these little bars which represent the notes that are being played. And you can click on them. You can also move them. So if we look at, say, the little bass line, I'm just going to solo the bass. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But if we look at that, we can easily change some of these notes. So let's say that first note there, if we go back to the start, that note there, let's say we wanted it to be the octave again. We could just move it like that. Or maybe even higher. Maybe that. And you can really, editing in that way is really, really, really simple. Uh, we can also do it in a score editor, simply by grabbing notes and moving them around. So uh, again, you know, it's really, really simple. The editor also works for editing audio, so if we click on the drums there, which is, uh, I'm just going to solo those uh, drums up as well, you can see now that the editor looks a little different. We can't change the notes of an audio file. The other things are a MIDI file, which we're going to talk about a little later on. Um, but there's plenty of different things that we can do to these audios, uh, the audio files anyway. We can alter the pitch and look at the tuning of it. We can quantize stuff. It's a pretty uh, decent little audio editor, that one. So uh, that's what that little uh, scissor tool there is, your audio editor button. Okay, so let's disappear. Get rid of that for a second. I'll uh, get all of the rest of the tracks back on as well. So other things down the bottom. Now, We've got here this uh, little, uh, what's a, a looper button, and this is our kind of a loop browser, and it's an incredible little thing, this. Uh, this is where all of those, the things that you can see here, that all that you're listening to so far, are all just little loops that I've brought out from here. Um, it's as simple as uh, if we wanted to, uh, I found one before this uh, funny synth thing, so uh, if I look around for uh, an interesting synth array too, I think I was going to use. So if I just drag that into the browser there and let go, it'll now have this synth that gets played along with what we were doing. Okay, so we've just added that one little, this bit. And we can move it around if we don't want it there, if we want it to come in later, we can do stuff like copy it. Uh, and have it around, you know, we can edit it, we can make it longer or shorter, we can change the pitch, there's all sorts of uh, incredible things that you can do with the loops, and it's really just as, you know, it's very, very simple to do. Um, the important thing here to realize is that there's two different types of these loops. There's the ones with the little blue icon, which are audio, like that synth array there. So you can see if we pop that up in the editor there, uh, it's an audio file. Whereas if we were looking at the MIDI files, okay, which are these ones with the green icons, that's where we get the piano roll or the score, where we can actually really easily change the notes. So with an audio loop, you can't really change the notes in it, but you can fiddle with it in other ways. You can adjust the pitch, uh, and you can chop it up into lots of different little segments and arrange them how you like. But it's important to realize that there's these two different things. Um, you can see there, just by clicking on them, you get a uh, little sample of what's going on. Click on it again and it stops. That's how you start and stop it. You don't need to use the space bar to start and stop them. So literally just click on it and click on it again and it'll stop. It'll also tell you how many beats or bars there are in each one. And uh, worth noting here as well is that if you go to your GarageBand preferences, which is also Apple comma, uh, and you go to loops, you can display original tempo and key, which is a pretty useful thing to add in there. So you can see by checking that, uh, we've now got the original tempo, particularly for audio, if you're very far away from the original tempo, it can sound a little bit weird. Uh, it also tells you the key and how many bars long the loop is, which is also uh, 
really important kind of information. There's a couple of different ways of looking at these things. Uh, I tend to use this way, but you can also click on the uh, little menu and look at it like this and look at it, say, by instrument and then look at all drums and then look at beats or look at cymbals or whatever. You can. There's a few different ways of doing it. This button here is the podcast button. I, I've never really used it, to be honest. I think it's sound effects. At least that's what it looks like uh, to me. Yeah, this is all, you know, gives us a few... Hey! <laughs> I love this program. It's, it's just full of surprises. Anyway, so uh, that's the, the, some of the different things that you've got available in loops. Now, if you go to the I button there, this is your information button. And a uh, very uh, clever little thing, this one, uh, particularly when you click on the editor, uh, it gives you a whole heap of different options. So if we go to the drums there, it gives you different effects that you can add. It gives you EQ. You can click on, uh, you know, adjust the EQ, uh, the equalization of the track, like how high and how low the sounds are that are coming through. You've got things like echo and reverb, a compressor, uh, which is, you know, really, really good fun to have a fiddle about with these different things, uh, you know, as you, you grow in your understanding of uh, audio and recording and mixing and stuff that's fascinating to play with. Well, again, more on that a little later. And we've also got the master track, which is uh, the kind of the final track where all of the audio comes out, uh, particularly something like a compressor. You probably want to have a compressor on the master track, but we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a later lesson again. Um, last of all down here, uh, we've got the media browser, which just shows you the different things that you've done in the past, the, the tracks that you've uh, already recorded. I don't tend to use that section too much. You can see you've got photos and movies there as well, which I'm uh, not particularly interested in right now. Well, I hope that's given you some understanding of the basic tools that you've got available in GarageBand. I really hope you'll join me for the next lesson where we're going to actually build up a track using all of the different loops, and we'll look at a little bit of editing in that as well. So uh, I'll see you for that very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.